tropical storm winds. We're talking 39 miles an hour and gusts possibly to 60 plus in some areas. We're planning on rain event being anywhere from six to 10 inches right now. At one point, the water was coming up out of this heater duct, uh, a foot and a half in the air, just bubbling right out. First, I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> now, most everything's ruined, so <laughs> I don't really like it. September 16, 1999, Hurricane Floyd made landfall on the southeast coast, then set its sights on the capital region. As forecasted, Floyd weakened to a tropical storm before it got here, but wind and rain still wreaked havoc. As we braced for impact, then Governor George Pataki placed the National Guard on alert. The State Emergency Management Office in Albany was also staffed around the clock. I would expect to see uh, probably water uh, collected to make when the power goes out to make provisions for when the power or if the power goes out. Uh, be prepared to uh, uh, make sure that everything that can blow around outside is taken inside so that it doesn't cause damage to, to other, other people's property. Early impacts on the capital region were minimal unless you were like this woman who decided to postpone her flight to Florida. They're having, according to the internet, 17 foot swells at, at um, Cape Canaveral mm -hmm. already. So even if it doesn't hit, they're going to get clobbered. This isn't the biggest travel time of the year for Florida right now, but people are having a hard time making their connecting flights elsewhere in the country. It's going to be a wait and see here, at least in Albany. And what we're advising people to do is, is simply keep in touch with their airlines. It's probably going to be a couple of days before things really flush out. But then the rain and the wind came here and predictions of major flooding came true. After a summer of drought or near drought in the capital region, many roads just couldn't take the sudden deluge Floyd dropped here. In Menands, this section of Broadway was closed between the 378 overpass to Menands Road. In Albany, Fuller Road was flooded to the point where one driver was forced to abandon his truck. Proving some things never change, this car was abandoned in the middle of Western Avenue near Stevenson Plaza. Trying to leave town in the height of the storm was not fun for travelers. Tons of flights were canceled at Albany International Airport and the rail station lost power. Kumi Tucker reports. It's pouring in Rensselaer, but between here and New York City, the tracks are flooded. Trains that made it as far as the capital region are now sitting tight. We both got out in Saratoga. Thinking that everything would be fine. Yeah. We'd get here on time, on schedule, and then we're caught in this disaster. It was either the train or the rain. Compared to the Amtrak station, the airport was a ghost town, although on the boards there was a lot more red than green. For many, this was a travel nightmare, and to make matters worse, at the Amtrak station, the power went out. I just couldn't stop thinking about that movie, Trains, Planes, and Automobiles, you know, starting off in Madison uh, on a jet, touching down in uh, Detroit, and uh, having them tell us every airport was closed on the eastern seaboard other than Albany, New York. He thought he might make it to New York City on the train. He was wrong. For some of the stranded, there was hope. For those passengers that are traveling west, traveling west only, we will be able to reaccommodate you. We're going to be adding a couple of coaches to the train. That would be the last train heading out for the night. Some people chose to spend the night on the trains and just wait until things get going again. Kubi Tucker, News Channel 13, AM Live. Damage reports flooded in and continued overnight and beyond. The normally timid Sand Creek in Albany became a raging river. Firefighters were pumping out water four feet deep in some spots. I'm going to tell you there's got to be 25 homes, at least 25, that lost a lot. A man who lived in West Albany with his 86-year-old mother could not believe the destruction. I was lost. I see how everything's gone. I didn't think it would happen. Now I got to start all over. 
The Red Cross came with help that included dry beds for a family that was sleeping on a waterlogged floor. A mental health counselor was on hand to help people deal with emotional pain, and there were even teddy bears for the kids. Red Cross relief workers went door to door last night making a list of all of the damage. Some people will need new water heaters or furnaces. One man told me that all he had to wear were the clothes on his back, those he got from the Red Cross. Nearby Manans was not any better. This is typical of the basements on Broadway and Manans today. Furniture, television sets, clothing, all ruined by the water. Firefighters tried to pump out the basements yesterday, but the water poured in, they said, faster than they could pump it out. That's when they told residents they had to evacuate. Washers floating, my dryer was underneath, the brand new furnace is underwater. A family living near the Norman Skill in Albany worked to pick up the pieces of what was left. Right now we got rid of all the water, we pumped all the water out, so we're just trying to clean it up, but we lost just a lot of the stuff downstairs, all the carpeting and some of the furniture and lost all of it. But some of the most incredible damage was between Route 146 and Willow Street in Gilderland. A huge section of Western Avenue collapsed in the middle of the night. It washed away the uh, east, both eastbound lanes and part of the westbound passing lane. A 12-inch natural gas main was blown in the process and nearby homes were evacuated. Even at 1 o'clock in the morning, this is a pretty heavily traveled section of Western Avenue. And the only thing that prevented a car from coming down this section of road that collapsed was the fact that they had closed the road earlier due to flooding. The effects lingered when the storm finally moved out. This Stony Creek Warren County family was still without power more than three days later, a small generator providing a crumb of comfort. How do you get around? Flashlights. A lot of flashlights. <laughs> then we have one light we use. We plug it into the generator and we can use that. Then when we leave it run until the generator runs out of gas, then we go to bed. In fact, more than 400 miles of trails in the Adirondacks were blocked by downed trees and mudslides as many as 200 boats may have sunk in Lake George. Over in Altamont, storm runoff through rocks, earth, and tree limbs into sewers. And if crews didn't act fast, predictions were just another half inch of rain would cause a repeat that no one wanted. All of these stream crossings at these roads would get plugged up pretty seriously and it caused some pretty serious flooding in some of these houses out here. Joined now by Chief Meteorologist Paul Cayano, here to offer some expertise. You were here that day, I imagine, working at News Channel 13. Talk about just what you remember from that day. Well, believe it or not, while I was here as an employee, my assignment that day was to go to Cape Cod. Oh my gosh. So, because Floyd, the track was right up and scraping the coast and it came up over Long Island, we wanted to have somebody on the front end of the storm and of course, with the Cape being right on the ocean, we expected high seas and, and, and we got a lot of that on the Cape, only to come back here at the end of the day to find that it was worse here in the capital region with just an absolute ton of rain and all the flooding and the devastation here. Right, and you have data in front of you. Yeah. You guys took data by hand in those days every single day and you have the entry from that. Yeah, actually, yeah, it was. It says right here, I, it, it's funny, but yeah, it's every day going back to the early 80s here and, and um, it says uh, rain developed uh, south and east at midnight and then it became heavy. Uh, all time 24 hour precipitation record for Albany with 5.6 inches of rain. And uh, the next page, we go into a little more detail. We had uh, weather stations at schools and a Cairo Durham, almost 11 inches of rain, Bennington, almost eight, Hudson, over seven, Albany, right in downtown Albany, over seven and a half inches of rain. Wow. So uh, the record was at the weather service, but really the entire immediate capital district saw some of the heaviest rain to fall totals on record. That's amazing. Yeah. So when you got back here to the station, you'd spent all day at the Cape. What sort of went through your head when you saw what was happening? It was pretty remarkable because um, we had been getting reports back to us at the Cape from, you know, remember, there's no no cell phones, right? right? So right. like you make limited phone calls if you mm -hmm. have to, because we're sending back our stuff to the station that we're going to report on. Mm -hmm. And here I was thinking what we were seeing was going to be the worst of it. But uh, when they told us that they were getting it pretty bad there, I was thinking, well, 
we'll see when we get back. But when, yeah, I mean, for sure, when we got back, it was obvious that the Capital Region sustained a pretty serious hit. Talk about the days after the storm hit, kind of the, the cleanup and the recovery process. Yeah, I mean, similar to some of the other storms that we've had, you know, people come together as a community. Um, you see everyone helping each other out. And uh, of course, the insurance company is floating around. You have a lot of, a lot of um, you know, emergency management officials and, and stuff. But, but I think more than anything, you, you realize that sense of community and, and camaraderie and, and maybe your neighbor got flooded out and you're helping pump that person's basement out or, or, or something to that degree or, or, or your road is closed or there was a tree that came down mm -hmm. and, and you know people gather together to clear the road so people can get through with whatever it may be, ice or, or any kind of the, the basic needs that you need. And, and these types of situations, I think, always bring out the best in people, right? Yeah. You see the kind of community and especially here in the capital region, how everyone comes together to help each other out. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Several capital region counties were declared disaster areas in the wake of the storm, making them eligible for federal funding. Sadly, a total of 49 people died nationwide. To watch our original coverage of other big capital region events, head to our News Channel 13 YouTube page and click on News Vault 13. For now, opening News Vault 13, I'm Rachel Teedy.